Welcome once again to St. David's Church, Lacha, where we're with you for this service for the third Sunday of the Easter season. This may be the last one recorded in this way. We've been recording and editing services so that people at home and people in other parts of the country can join with us. But we're hoping that soon, maybe even next week, we'll be able to stream live the Sunday service from this church, with the aid of a camera at the back and the screens at the front, which we're going to use for the service and the words of hymns. Bear with us, it's technology. There might be one or two teething issues, but hopefully you'll still be able to join us if you can't physically come. And of course, if you can come, please do come and sing with us, pray with us and learn with us. You're always welcome. This morning we've got some readings. Peter is going to read to us about Saul's conversion. Rob is going to pray. And I've got a few things to say about one of those events after Jesus' resurrection. So let's worship.
a reading from Acts 9, verses 1 to 6. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light flashed from heaven, flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you persecuted, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Our reading today is from John chapter 21. It's after Jesus' resurrection and possibly a week or even two after the resurrection. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him, for he'd taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred metres. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish on it, and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me.
Risen Lord, help us to know you, the power of your resurrection, and the world in which we must live your new life. Amen. Can we go back now? You probably know the experience. You've just started a, a long walk or maybe a car journey with a packed car and children in the back as well as lots of luggage. And you're ten minutes into it when a little voice appears. Can we go back now? It's not only children, of course. Adults get nostalgic. We long for the good old days, the time when we were young and active, when we had friends at school or college, and above all, for the time when the world sang our tune. These days, I think it's much sharper because, of course, we're coming out of COVID and saying, it's almost back to normal. But, well, this story of the disciples going fishing, they don't like sitting around. They don't like not knowing what's going to happen next. I can feel for Simon Peter and the others, perhaps you can too. Oh, I'm fed up with all this. Let's do something. I can fish. I know how to fish. It's a useful thing to do. I'm going fishing. But it's not the same. Somehow things have changed. And when Jesus meets them early in the morning, there's nothing to show for a night's hard work. They'd seem to have forgotten that other time that Luke told us in his Gospel, it's part of chapter 5, when they fished all night and caught nothing, and Jesus showed them where to find the fish, which they caught in such large numbers that they nearly sank. Some of us were telling that story in school this week. That had been the time when Peter really started following Jesus, when he came to understand that Jesus knew more than he did, and not just about religion, he seemed to know about fishing too. And so it is this time. Once again, Jesus shows he knows what he's talking about. Once again, they share a meal with him. Lots of meals in the New Testament, quite important. It's no accident that we enjoy eating together with friends. And this one, yes, it's important. It's not the Last Supper, it's not that, but yeah, it's a breakfast they're not going to forget for quite a long time. And after the meal, Jesus takes Peter for a walk. Not perhaps a terribly comfortable walk. This is Peter, who'd been full of enthusiasm the night of Jesus' betrayal. I'll be there, Lord. I'll be with you. I won't let you down. And Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows, you'll have denied me three times. And you remember the story, how a serving girl and somebody else round the fire had said to him, Oh, you must be one of them. You're from up north. You've got a funny accent. And he denies it. And then realises what he's done and goes out in tears. This Peter who goes for a walk with Jesus is not the grown-up, swaggering, boastful fisherman. This is the grown-down, slightly deflated Peter with less mouth and more ear. Oh, it's not instantaneous. He's still going to make mistakes. He's still Peter. There's still the ability to put his foot in it with energy and conviction. But they have this chat. And Peter is 
forgiven and reinstated. And Peter realises that now there's no going back. He's not going to be a fisherman on Galilee again. Whatever the future holds, and it's very unclear here, it's going to be different. Well, I wonder how that affects us. Perhaps you're thinking, oh well, it's nice to come to church and to celebrate Easter, that's good news, it is part of the good news, isn't it? And then perhaps we'll go off and have a bank holiday or whatever. But there's no going back. We can't go back to the old days. We can't go back to when we were different people. And we can't go back to the way things were before Easter. Christian life is lived with a risen Lord. And with that call that Jesus gave to Peter, follow me. I'm afraid we're not going back to the way things were before Covid, because actually you never go back. You always go forward. Oh, I hope that some things will be easier. I hope that we'll have fewer people ill. I hope we'll be able to gather more. But I hope too that we'll remember some of the lessons we've learnt about how we need the NHS and our key workers. How it's really important that our local neighbourhood works, even for the people who don't work in the local neighbourhood. Jesus' resurrection is something new. Oh, I know it's 2,000 years ago, but it's still new for us to investigate and work out. And it's going to make our lives different. Yes, even if you've lived as a Christian for 5, 10, 20, 30, I won't go too far, it might get embarrassing. No matter how long you've been part of a congregation, your Christian life will be new, developing, growing. So let's do it. Let's do it with joy and thanksgiving. Let's remember the honesty that Peter needed to have that walk with Jesus and sometimes we may have to have slightly hard conversations like that too. But let's go on and feed the sheep, and care for the lambs, and rejoice in the risen Lord who takes us forward.
Let us come before the Father in prayer. Father Almighty, your Son revealed himself again and again and convinced his disciples of his glorious resurrection. Help us to feel his risen presence so that we can lovingly feed the sheep and take care of the lambs of this parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for the example of leadership given to us by your Son, Jesus Christ, in his life on earth, and how, in a very practical sense, he showed his followers a new way to live. We pray for those who have oversight over us, for Andy, our Archbishop, John, our Bishop, for Adrian, our Vicar, and for Andrew, Glenn, and Elizabeth, and all others who work within our parish for the furtherance of your kingdom. We also pray for world leaders at this time, that they may know integrity and wisdom as they perform their allotted tasks. We remember Elizabeth, our Queen, in this jubilee year of her reign. We thank you for her and for her faithfulness, asking that you will bless her and continue to be with her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have called us to follow in the way of your risen Son and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words, but with acts of love. As we seek to be true friends of all, we pray for our families, our friends and our neighbours, especially in areas where there are problems with our relationships. But as always, be the ones to make the first steps towards reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Gracious Father, we remember this morning those who are sick, downcast or lonely, and those who are brave and patient when things are going wrong. We pray that they may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. We pray also at this time for those who dwell in the areas of warfare in the world. We particularly remember those in the Ukraine and the needless suffering they're experiencing. Lord, please make provision for them and encourage them as they make their stand at this evil time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Finally, Lord, at the start of this new week, help us to be an example to others as you were with your disciples. The practical steps we need to take so that we can change the ways in which we do things and so develop consistency and integrity in all that we do in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed being with us today and that we'll be with you in future, virtually or in person, whichever way works. Now, I'd like to send you out with a prayer. So, let's finish. Father, thank you. Thank you for Jesus' resurrection. Thank you for Peter and all the other disciples who found a new way and a new life and a new joy, who continued to follow Jesus. So now, go into your life and your world in the power of the risen Lord. Find out what it is that he's calling you to, so that you may be blessed and may be a blessing to all those around you so that they begin to ask questions about what it is that you found and whether you can pass it on. Amen.